This is the Fantasy Basketball Wrap-Up exclusively on Octane Infinity TV. Uh, week number one is now in the books. Let's see how our teams did. Beginning first with our new GM, David, and his camp's champs. He takes on uh, the young veteran, Evan. And uh, both GMs combined for seven moves this week. As expected, though, the Stars uh, carried both of these teams. Pau Gasol crushed it for David this week. Uh, Laker power forward uh, led camp's champs with 104 points, shooting over 55% from the field. Uh, giving David wins in points and field goal percentage. Uh, Gasol also swatted 10 shots, uh, so David wins um, a total of three categories for this week. Uh, he can also thank Darren Collison and Ray Felton. Uh, they both combined for 57 assists, so it gives him a tie with Evan in that category. Uh, Evan, however, would sweep the remaining five categories, led by Minnesota forward Kevin Love. The uh, league's reigning rebounding champion led all players in this matchup with 61 boards. He also gave Evan 103 points with seven three-pointers and uh, four steals to go with that. So great work uh, for both UGMs this week, but with one tie, Evan defeats David 5-3. to three. In our second Week 1 match, we have uh, our other rookie GM of the league, Matt Bob, going up against Chris. Now, neither GM made a single move this week, uh, seemingly content with their rosters. Matt's team, however, came out strong and held a steady 6-3 advantage for most of the week. Uh, one big reason, Dwayne Wade. Flash was the only triple-digit scorer in the matchup this week with 101 points. Uh, remarkably, he did that with no three-pointers. Uh, he also finished the week with 11 blocks. This is a point guard shooting guard with 11 blocks, people. That's the same amount of swats that Chris got uh, from his center, Serge Ibaka. Very, very impressive. And how about Kyle Lowry? Uh, the Rocket Guard gave Matt Bob a quadruple double for the week, uh, leading all players for this matchup in both assists and steals. Uh, only two categories appear close, uh, but the other seven were not. Matt runs away with this 7-2. to two. Let's move on to the white division. Uh, in rivalry week, Scott took on Adam. Uh, I thought this was a great matchup on paper. 14 teams suited up for Hacksaw while Adam's roster remained unchanged. Scott's team was very careful uh, on the shooting while Adam's was obviously a little bit more aggressive offensively, torching the landlord in threes and outscoring him by nearly 200 points. Adam's two shining stars here were Marcus Thornton from Sacramento and Carmelo Anthony of the Knicks, both with 100 points apiece. Scott um, grabbed wins in uh, the percentage categories and assists, but that's all he'd get. Um, Adam beat Scott by just four steals, and he took care of business in the rest of the categories. So Adam, uh, the Adam bomb has been dropped. Scott is uh, has lost this matchup six to three. The other white division matchup has uh, the Battle of the Mikes: Ripcord Wargowski versus Cobra, our reigning league champion. Cobra already outpacing uh, the team, uh, the league, in fact, in moves made. He made 14 in week one, including uh, one six player deal that he made with Edwin. Uh, and more on that in a second. But overall, 28 players suited up for Cobra. And he needed every single one of them, too, it looks like, to combat uh, 16 for Ripcord. So here's the trade. Cobra sent Chuck Hayes, DeAndre Jordan, and the now injured Eric Gordon to Edwin. In return, he gets uh, All-Star Kobe Bryant, uh, former All-Star Mehmet Okur, and uh, certainly an All-Star caliber player in Kevin Martin. This move or this trade was made official on Friday. So with the two days of eligibility, Cobra got 70 points and 19 assists from the new trio. He also got nine threes, but there was uh, no beating rip in that category in fantasy or in the real world for that matter. These two GMs uh, were most active on the message boards, it, it seems, with all the trash talk that was going on. A lot of back and forth was uh, certainly justified. This is um, arguably the closest matchup of the week. Uh, came down to shooting percentage, and I tell you, Cobra was lucky here. Ripcord won the free throw category by just one-tenth of a percent. And Kobe Bryant... Uh, after he picked him up uh, for, for on Friday, eligible for Saturday, uh, Kobe just shot 26% from the field, really dragging him down in that category, shooting just 6 for 28 on Saturday in the home game versus the Nuggets. So I guess Cobra was lucky uh, Lakers had a day off on Sunday because uh, he just 
barely got by on winning field goals by less than 1%, thus winning the matchup over Ripcord 5-4. to four. Now on to the uh, Asian division. Our league commissioner, Edwin, took on Rene. Uh, Edwin made two other moves this week besides the trade with Cobra, and Rene uh, is well seemingly challenging Cobra for the amount of moves made. Uh, he made seven player changes for the week. Uh, both GMs seem to be doing their uh, due diligence as they were close in all nine categories. Both percentage cats were decided by less than 1%. And <clears throat> and as I look at the seven assists and four steals um, separated both of these teams, and three pointers made was decided by just two. Due to a sore right knee, Eric Gordon never uh, played for Edwin. Didn't need him anyway. Um, doesn't pass much, but uh, Edwin won the assist category. He got it from his bench. Andre Miller from the Denver Nuggets, who led all players in assists uh, for this entire matchup with 30 assists, excuse me, 36 assists for the entire week. Uh, Rene kept this match close. Two players uh, for Hoop Kings that uh, shouldn't stay off the radar uh, for most of you GMs. I'm talking about Tony Douglas of the Knicks and um, Kevin Garnett, both with triple doubles for Rene for the week. And uh, certainly not under the radar is uh, Dirk Nowitzki of the champion Dallas Mavericks. He led uh, all scorers for Rene with 109 points. Uh, as I said, the Battle of Mikes um, was arguably the closest matchup. You can certainly make a case for this one, though. This one went 5-4, to four, but in favor of Edwin. The uh, final matchup, also in the Asian division uh, during rivalry week, was Jonas's Gorilla Monsoons, and they took on my Lob Pastors. Not much I can say really about this. Uh, I mentioned on my preseason show that I liked uh, Jonas's team on paper, but roster does appear to have some uncertainties. We knew Brooke Lopez had surgery on his foot and may be out for two weeks. Tyrus Thomas uh, sprained his ankle, and he didn't even play a single game this week. Um, so. Not really sure when he's going to come back, but here's what we can be sure of with Jonas's team. He has Derrick Rose. He has Blake Griffin. Those guys can certainly carry a team. While Jonas never took the lead in this matchup, um, these two players can certainly keep him competitive. Uh, the percentage categories were a toss-up between both of our teams, it appears. Um, looks like Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose was awesome from the foul, foul line. He had uh, 93%. And um, Jonas would have been crushed on the free throw percentage if it weren't for him. Uh, Griffin, on the other hand, for um, for Jonas, he led all scorers in this matchup with 104 points, shooting over 55% from the field. Jonas only lost that category by less than 1%. This was close, uh, largely in part to Russell Westbrook for my team. He was he had a nightmare of a week shooting wise, including one night where he went uh, 0 for 13 at Memphis. It was pretty bad, and he went on the next night to shoot, uh, continue his uh, poor shooting uh, with 40%. Uh, Westbrook also turned the ball over 27 times uh, this week, so um, not looking good for me. He's on my can't cut list, so I can't cut him. Um, if I do part ways with him, it have to be via a trade. Uh, I'm not too serious about that, though. It's still early in the season. Um, and I, <clears throat> I must remember that this... Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, remember that it is early in the season because uh, Ryan Anderson has been kicking so much ass for me, and I'm hoping he can stay that way. But this player wasn't even mentioned at all on the um, auction draft night, and I picked him up later that night as a free agent for absolutely nothing. Um, here's what he did for me. This is the damage Ryan Anderson of Orlando uh, did. He had 21 threes made for 102 points total uh, 31 rebounds and uh, went uh, to the line for 90% of his shots made 90% of his shots and shot just a little bit below 50% from the field so sleepers are out there fellows be sure to keep your eyes uh, out on the free agency wire so I beat uh, Jonas this week six to three so um, after all these uh, matchups let's take a look at the standings now um, I lead the Asian division after beating Jonas. Adam has the same record with the 6-3, and three, uh, leading his white division. And for the newbies, uh, as well as the entire league, Matt leads uh, with a 7-2 and two record. Uh, let's look at the stats now. Adam and Cobra led the entire league in two categories apiece for Week 1. Uh, Adam outpaced everyone in rebounds and steals, while Cobra had the most assists and blocks to go along with the most moves 
uh, made for the week. Matt Bob led in field goal percentage. Ripcord had the most threes. I had the most points. Chris had the fewest turnovers. And uh, if I could be racist for a moment, it appears that in the free throw percentage category, the top four were uh, all the teams in the Asian division. So <laughs> squinted eyes. Yeah, they definitely focus at the foul line. Moving on, let's look into the um, week two matchups. There, um, who do we have? It's uh, I didn't have my page queued up. Shoot, who are my week two matchups? Here we go. Okay, so I take on Chris. Uh, Edwin takes on Scott. Looks like Matt will have uh, Jonas this week. Adam will take on Renee. That should be a good matchup. Ripcord will face David. And the league champ will take on Taekwondo Kid, a.k.a. Evan. Definitely set your lineups because there's 10 games on the schedule tonight. Uh, two more things before I go. Tonight uh, in reality basketball, Octane Infinity has a game. If you're out on the west side, be sure to stop by the courts of Beaverton for a 7 o'clock game against the Step Brothers. Game is free. Uh, but uh, with, with this being the first game on the schedule, definitely want to be there on time to catch tip-off. And then um, last, if you haven't had the opportunity to w wish uh, Renee a happy birthday, he turned 39 on Saturday, which means he's now younger than Mike. Just kidding, man. I used that joke with the ripcord earlier in the week. Uh, anyways, for all of us here at uh, Octane Infinity, I'm Saigon John, your only bomb from Vietnam, and boom goes the dynamite.